let's talk about some needs right yeah. now for the Carolina Panthers. Um, let's talk about um, the different uh, free agents. They, I think there's the number is like 22 free agents um, that are going to be up, which is a, a large number. So you're you're probably going to there's a chance you have to replace half of your team. Um, there are some ones that I feel like are are key to um, this operation that you have to bring back. And I, I wrote mm-hmm. down a list yesterday. Um, Deontay Foreman. Yeah. Absolutely have to bring him back. And I think mm-hmm. it's, it's probably going to be um, easy to bring him back because there's so many running backs that are hitting the market right now yeah. that will require more money than what Deontay Foreman can require. Now, he was only, what, 67 yards, I think, or 70-something yards away from hitting 1,000 yards this season, which is amazing to think about because yeah. he only really started starting in week seven. Um, it had like what thirteen total carries before um, before that <laughs> week. So uh, you need to bring him back. Uh, you have guys like Josh Jacobs, Kareem Hunt. Uh, you have Saquon Barkley, other guys like that who are probably going to set the the running back market, who are going to get picked up before him because of their history. They have more than just this year to look yeah. back on. So I think it it kind of bodes well for the Carolina Panthers um, in in negotiating with Deontay Foreman. You need to bring him back, put him on a two or three year deal, um, and I, I think you, you kind of set that running back room for the next couple of years. Yeah, Bradley Bozeman, oh, your center. Fun. Yeah, absolutely have to bring him back. Pat mm-hmm. Elfline, thank you, we appreciate it. But when Bradley Bozeman came in, that line looked even better. Now, Pat Elfline, if you want to come back as a backup, sure, we'll take Why that, not? and, yeah, and we'll we can plug you back. in. If a guard gets hurt, that type of thing, yeah. you're not the best at it, but you've been with the group, so continuity, cool, sounds good. Um, but we need to get Bradley Bozeman back. Frankie Louvu has one year already left. Mm-hmm. Frankie Louvu, in my humble opinion, has probably been the MVP of the defense this yeah. entire season. You can argue that. So let's get him right now, while he's cheap, to extend on that year that he has left. On his contract, because we want this guy to be around for a little bit longer because of guys like Brian Burns, Mm -hmm. who's coming at the end of his uh, rookie contract. You need to go ahead and and pay him a lot of money. Get him to stay. He is worth all of that. Mm -hmm. Bring back Raheem Blackshear. Okay, He's the third uh, string running back. Uh, He gave you a good change of pace behind Hubbard and um, also behind Deontay Foreman. And I think he did a really good job with, uh, you know, punts and, and, and returning kicks. Yeah. And Better I think the me. Panthers need some continuity there as well because that's been a revolving door for a long time. Bring back Josh Norman. Now, the reason why I say this mm. is because the Carolina Panthers showed how much the, the cornerback room drops off after Dante Jackson – and J.C. Horn went down. Now, I don't think that Josh Norman is on their level at all. That's not what I'm saying. But they don't have that veteran guy as a cornerback that could rally everybody who's been through the fire as much as Josh Norman. Now, Dante Jackson, you can kind of consider him a veteran. This is his – he'll be going to his sixth year, I believe, in the NFL. But it's clear that C.J. Henderson didn't know what he was doing Keith Taylor did not know what he was doing when everything went down. And you're going to need somebody, especially Wilkes as the head coach, that can bring – it's almost like having Udonis Haslam on your team. Yeah, You're not really expecting a lot from him, but yeah. you have a coach on the field, you have a coach in the locker room that could be an extension of the head coach to set it. Um, and then I believe that you bring back Sam Darnold. Okay. The reason why you only sign him for a year or two – Sam, we appreciate what you've been doing. You were the best quarterback on the roster last year. Mm -hmm. We don't feel like you are the future of our franchise, but we feel like you can help set up the future of our franchise. You're going to be the starter until whoever we draft is ready to to start in front of you. Okay. Um, I want to go back to Josh Norman here for a moment before we get into Sam Darnold. Um, At his age, I don't know. Uh, Because here's the thing. I'm only thinking a year or two. Yeah, I'm not but, thinking like you, you sink a lot of money into them. Not at all. Yeah, I, here's, here's, my, here's my thoughts on that. They certainly definitely need corner depth because after Jackson and, and J.C. Horn, obviously you mentioned that drop-off with, with C.J. Henderson and Taylor. But if he's not going to play, 
because he's not a special teams guy. He's not going to be a slot corner guy. Okay, yeah, he could be depth, but otherwise he's not going to. Third are you down. Gonna dress him just to sit there on the bench. No, that's third, the thing. Third down, special situations. I, you know, yeah, I think Josh Norman could still do that. He's I, still, I a, he's still a good tackler. Is he? We haven't seen him play football in a year. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, that, is he? Because he did give up that touchdown though. To, <laughs> to yeah, but, but, they give yeah, up but, that touchdown. Yeah, but that's the thing is that okay? They signed him out of necessity. What is the rest of the league telling us? If he was still that good level of a player, he would have already been on a roster. That's what the league is telling us. So I don't see the need to bring him back. But what did that, the league tell us about Deontay Foreman? And Deontay Foreman, with the chance to play, was, was on a roster. My point is, is that he Josh had a hard Norman time was, staying on a roster, though. My man bounced around. Yeah, okay, bouncing around is one different thing, but at least he was still playing. Josh Norman was, like you said, was serving coffee two weeks ago. All right, like, hey, what's your, what, what do you want on your latte? What size? You know, that's what he was doing two weeks ago, and he was doing. Would you that rather all have Keith long. Taylor locking up the 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 best the the second best person on the second best wide receiver on the other side of to J C Horn? You only had to choose between Keith Taylor and Josh Norman. Who are you putting on that person? I'll put me out there. I'll probably do just as good as a job. Get out. Of here. <laughs> Get okay, but my, my point is, I get what you're saying <laughs> about having a veteran and stuff out there. I, I get that. Someone in the locker room. But I, he, if, if he's not going to bring value, I don't think he's going to bring any value on the field. Unless, unless you sign him and sit there and say, hey, Josh, we're going to put you on the practice squad, and this is what your role is, and you're just strictly going to be a practice squad guy. We'll elevate you if we need you. That's a different situation. But I wouldn't put him on my 53 when I could potentially draft somebody who's going to be better and can stay with my team for, for several seasons. Or maybe there's a free agent out there. Look, there's... Tons of corners that are drafted every single year. You never know what you can find. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't put him on a 53. If he wants to sit on a practice squad, cool. But from what I would say, this is what the league tells us. Listen to what the league is saying through their action. Is that Josh Norman, if he was that good, he would have been signed either in during training camp by a team or right after training camp. You're like, hey, we need a corner. Oh, Josh Norman's out there. Or at some point during the season when guys go down. Yeah, so that, that's, I'm not that's saying, what I bring that I'm, I'm not saying he's, he's going to be... You know, of course, Dante and JC are, are in front of him. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think there is some value on third down. I think there's some value on, on uh, certain um, certain so. situations in the game. And uh, But I'm with you, though. If it's if it's a practice squad thing and, and we have a standard elevation per game, which is basically the contract that he was on, um, you know, for the last two games, I'm, I'm completely fine with that. But I think that there is value having that guy in the locker room, even if he's, okay, maybe he's not a player. Maybe Josh Norman's not a player. Maybe you put him in as a special defensive assistant, and maybe this is the beginning of his coaching career. But I, I think that, that there's value having that guy uh, a part of your organization in, in the locker room. Okay. Yeah, I, I, see, I see the value of having him around, but I wouldn't put him on my 53. That's the only thing I will say. Okay. Um, but you mentioned your point about, about Sam Darnold. Sure, I bring him back as a bridge quarterback. I think he definitely proved that that's his ceiling. He's a bridge quarterback, backup. That's that he proved that. I mean, gosh, he was what five for fifteen yesterday. Yeah. Okay. For all for all you Sam Darnold stands out there when the when he's like, oh well, if you take these these five four or five games right here and you put that over the course <laughs> of a whole season, look at the stats. Nah, don't do that crap. Come on now. Yeah. We know what Sam Darnold is. Yeah. He's not good. Okay. He's not. So quit trying to make it happen. Yeah. He stinks. Okay? Sure. Bridge guy. We can get into the, the whole quarterback drafting thing here in a moment. I don't know. Is Matt Corral the guy? I don't know. We never saw him play. But if you look at the draft this upcoming year, I don't know. In terms of are they going to be able to get a quarterback? They might have to move up. We can talk about that in a sec. But no, Sam Darnold's not the guy, people. Sell, settle down all you Sam Darnold stands out there. Quit trying to make things happen. Do you remember Derek Anderson with the Carolina yeah, Panthers? Do. Yeah, I do. I don't. I, I think Sam thinks he's higher than I think he thinks of himself as more than that. But Sam Darnold could be an amazing Derek Anderson if yeah. the Panthers find that number one guy. Like he's that guy where if the number one guy just happens to get hurt and we're going to be on the road against Tampa Bay. Bring in Sam Darnold for one game while our other guy, you know, is 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 healing up, and we're completely fine with that. That's I'm cool with that. He's if he if he can be Derek Anderson mm -hmm. for a few years, that's perfect. Yeah, that's fine. Then you know what? 
you can make a lot of money that way. You can make yeah. a great living being a backup quarterback. And I think yeah. that's what Sam Darnold is. Yeah. He's totally that.